This is the 35mm version uh, F2 and it does have the thorium uh, lens in it. So this one's the radioactive one. And then here's this one. This one's the F3.5 version aperture. Let's have a look at the size. See the size difference. So yeah, F2, always normally a bigger lens because of the um, aperture, the bit bigger glass. So small. Where else are you going to get lenses this size? You could travel with a small kit bag. It works in your favour. Having, having a, a kit bag with small lenses, absolutely amazing. If I can't show you the yellow, the yellow thorium, I'll, I'll probably do some close-up shots so that you can see, see the colour tinge. I haven't treated this lens yet. Uh, it does shoot, tends to shoot a little bit warm. Okay, as I said, yeah, I've mentioned briefly that some Pentax lenses are ra radioactive and this is one of them. With a yellow tinge to the lens, expect the performance to result in a very warm image and correction can be done uh, two ways, either in edit or we put the lens under a UV light for 24 hours. Colours, colours are really nice got a, 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 a retro feel to the image so it's when I, I talked I think pre, in, in other videos or pre, previous little reviews some of the new cameras are, 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 that can be clinical so they're sharp clean straight out of the box image this is where character falls into place this is what's going to set you different from another another photographer here's a photo uh, a bouquet of flowers and an absolute gem of a photo. You can see the, the Pentax Takama signature look where it goes wishy-washy with the fall off. Greens are great. Uh, I like the contrast, the contrast produced from these lenses. And if you go to my website, the review is in progress and I'll update more results in the coming, coming few weeks to months. Um, it's been a long process, but um, this is another lens that I'd probably like to take and do some street photography as well. So hit subscribe and we'll see you in the future and when we talk about we'll do some more in-depth review of this lens. Uh, the focus throw, did I talk about the focus throw? No, I haven't even spoken about the focus throw. So let's have a look. 90 degree. A 90 degree focus throw aperture the, the 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 widest the aperture goes like i said f2 and it closes down to f16 and the product code 49992 so if you see that number on your lens then you know you've got the radioactive version the smaller one that goes to f3.5 F, uh, it's 4.3.5.7.2 for the other 35mm lens, which I'm yet to test. That's what happens when you like the angry photography, you have too many lenses, you don't have time to use every lens. Pentax Takama 50mm F1.4, seven lenses in six groups, eight diaphragm blade, aperture blades, diaphragm blades, aperture blades, uh, code version 37902, and uh, I'll have the selfie with Fujifilm. 50mm 1.4 has a 220 degree throw on the lens. This doesn't sound as clean as the others. Maybe a little sticky. So it's hardly used, that's why. They can probably gunk up a little bit. Okay. Hear that? It's another way you test the lens prior to purchasing. If you can see the lens in person, you hold the lens up to your ear. It just feels like a little bit of grit or sand in the lens.
but still, it still performs very well. Okay, that's an example of not having, uh, it's probably say it's a 99% out of 100, maybe less. Okay, so with a longer focus throw of 220, it takes, it's a little bit more work to now focus, especially when you're using on a mirrorless camera. It just takes that little bit of extra time. So any, uh, any fast moving subjects, you're gonna ha um, have difficulty to nail focus. So don't, don't bother working with sports, but yeah, mostly portraiture and street, street photography. This, it's not as sharp and it's a little bit soft, this lens, compared to the other 50mm lenses. Uh, the 55mm f2 is, is a lot sharper than this one. Now, so uh, the key to finding a nice 50 out of the, these Pentex and what you prefer is just to test the, cam test the lenses. So yeah, uh, I think even on the forums, I think many people say that they've probably had like three versions of the f4 and by the third version it was sharp. Um, I'm not gonna worry about changing this, I'm gonna keep it. I, I think that some images being soft produce a certain look. If, if there's a certain project that comes up in the future and I only use a 50 millimeter lens and it has a, it has a look that I wanna aim for, well, I'll probably use that one. And F2 if I want a sharper image. Let's compare what a, what this 50 millimeter is like compared to a new uh, the EF mount, and here this is an example on the size difference. I'll take the lens cap off. Oh, gotta be careful I don't drop these lenses. Look at that. It's interesting. You see the glass. The glass in the EF mount's not much bigger than the glass in the Pentax. So there, that gets down to 1 1.2, 1 1.4. Let's put that away. It shoots very nice. Uh, I'm very happy with architecture type photographs. The, well, the with the XH1 greens, there are lovely greens. There. Okay, the gr the greens and the blues that that are produced from this lens, I'm quite content with, and pref I, I prefer them over a new lens. So that's the unit life in Wollongong, and you can see how straight it is and how, yeah, the, the zero distortion. There's the lighthouse, which is a nice looking image. You can see the fall off as, with the blur. The blurs, it's a smooth blur that, that runs through the lens, or if it runs through the image. There's another building shot for architecture. If, you, if, you, if you're into architecture, it's not a bad lens to have. Sharp and stance here. It shoots sharp at f11. When it's opened, when it's opened down to f1.4 and you're on your subjects, it's soft. And uh, this is going to be a growing review, so I'll probably revisit this video in the next few months. And we'll revisit that lens. Pentax Super Multicoder Takama 55mm 1.8 product code 37104 as you can see these lenses are the same size so all the 50s are pretty much let's double check that pretty much the same size the F2 is a bit, bit taller let's wind it down no let's wind it down they're all pretty much the same size F2 has uh, more of a yellow, a yellow uh, coat, a yellow paint in the numbers. I'm gonna put that down here. For this example, I screw the filter off just to show you the front. They're a really beautiful lens. I kind of, I kind of, I've said that they like man jewelry. They're a work of art, really, when you look at the way that they're made, the way the lettering's done. Okay, there's some discussion online, which is the best 50mm Pentax produced? 
Personally, I think it comes down to the photographer using each version. So you got the f1.4, 1.8 and f2. Uh, I find that I think I like the f2 the most. So there you go, it's a, a lens that doesn't open the widest. Uh, from what I understand, the f2 and the f1.8 are the exact same lens. They've just made inside the lens, they've just made it so the aperture doesn't close down that extra stop. Um, some people, I think, modify the lens just to open up that little bit extra. Times 1.6 crop on APC uh, sensor will equal 88 millimeters, and this is where this is where it's a bonus lens. So if you're into portrait photography and you shoot with the XH1, this becomes an 88 millimeter lens. So. If you don't have an 85mm lens, you can cheat by using this on a crop sensor camera. So if you've got two, most professionals have two camera bodies. If you've got a full frame, if you've got a full frame, and then you've got the APS-C and you need an 85mm lens, this bad boy will cover you and it will do a damn good job too. So that's, that's seriously great value in having a 55mm lens compared to an 85 and. This was around $100 or less that I purchased it for. Straight purchased it uh, from Japan. From, and when I use this, it's, it's a really nice focus throw. Makes a little bit of a noise like the other one. Maybe that might, might be the, the... Someone could message down below. Does your lens sound like it's a little gritty in the focus throw is that this could have been just the way they're made they just they don't glide as smooth as the other ones it could have been it could have been just how they were made so a picture of the python opened wide open and you can see how sharp it is and the lens fall off takes beautiful flowers that if you if you do your, your outdoor photography with, with flowers and there's some, a sample with the lavender guard like a garden and you can see the bouquet the bouquet is not as wishy-washy it's um, subtle and it's uh, soft but it's still there it still has that signature pentax that Takama look very sharp lens and um, still to do more more reviews and more samples with this with this lens okay what is the best 50 or 55 millimeter pentax there's a reason why I like the f2 the most like I said 88 mil especially for value if you want a true 80 millimeter in 1.8 aperture the range in prices start $500 upwards so for something under $100 you, yeah you're saving $400 plus by just buying a 55 millimeter lens so that's why it's, it's a bonus so you have the 50 mil and then you got the 55 which you can cheat and use it as an 88 millimeter now this version 55 millimeter is tack sharp on focus with a lovely fall off bouquet. Uh, a little vignetting, ever so slight, shows how shockingly good this is. A 330 degree throw on the lens, which surprised me compared to the others. Uh, no issues with an adapter, unlike the 50 millimeter 1.4 uh, didn't seat well, but um, this uh, 55 millimeter F2 is perfectly married to the adapter when connected. Outer lens, lens contrast is excellent, along with color, which is deep, uh, we add with a deep vibrance that needs no adjustment. So compared to Canon FD, uh, what was the Canon FD lens was a lot more, in an, in an 85 millimeter, uh, the difference became compared to the Canon FD 85 mil, where the 55mm Takama bokeh blue is much preferred. It's washy, wavy, and reigns as king. Just a, just a quick video on the, um, we'll just do a quick talk on the macro. 
50 millimeter macro goes in F4 closes down to F22 the same small compact lens difference with the macro they extend out a lot further two three four so four pretty much four little turns you also have the the, the remarkings on the um, the nose of the lens that's another thing you notice with Pentax Pentax has that chrome finish so it's a really nice vintage signature look so it's real deep probably one of the hardest lenses to photograph as a product to try and get the light in to show the element it's only a small piece of glass in there on top of the lens has the line product code 43912 here's the back lens cap that's the back of the lens <clears throat> there's a little pin that controls your aperture with the old film cameras we'll press that in as it takes the shot serial number 5 million 951,475 so if you do go to purchase this lens try aim for for the higher serial numbers I'll um, have samples on the website in the future I, I haven't used this macro at all so that's the next step in reviewing I do have samples uh, with the Canon FD macro lenses and we'll do in the future I'd like to do a uh, comparison with this first Canon FD and we'll see who's which which lens is the sharpest which oh, that's an interesting test that'll come up so keep keep you posted and that's the 50 millimeter macro f4 tacoma super multi coated this is a darling pentax this is the 85 millimeter 1.8 super multi coated uh, version code 43832 as you can see this lens the 80 mil, 85 millimeter is substantially bigger than all the other Pentax so that's the biggest it's the big boy and I can uh, presume that the, the bigger lens the next lens up 100 millimeter and then 135 they, they probably be bigger I'll take the filter off that's the front of the the lens I hope that's in focus okay let's talk about it let's get straight to the point of this lens everything you photograph will turn to gold this and this is probably understating how great the lens performs lovely lovely bokeh when shot wide open at 1.8 a 270 degree throw on the focus ring so it's not that bad really 270 Okay, eight aperture blades with a max aperture of 1.8 closes down to f16. Let's see if I can do it. Go this way. And 1.8. Uh, extreme high quality portrait lens, all metal construction again, with nice resolving optics. Design six elements in six groups. And then I'll, here's the photo of me photographing the camera or the camera that's filming me is the GH4 with the cage on it and you can see the colors the colors are beautiful this this spot on to, to be honest lens fall off it's it's a really soft blur I'm gonna make sure you nail focus then that's the beauty of mirrorless cameras you can digital punch in to find your location use the wheel or your joystick to uh, find the focus point and then once you've finessed it click down and you've got the, sh got the shot takes lovely uh, images of, photo of flowers and you can see the bee busy as a bee um, it does have a chromatic aberration 
and it can be easily fixed in post. So with the Dove Bridge Camera Rod, just um, you can do an example of purple fringing and defringe amount, and that's an easy, simple fix. So excellent portrait lens. Uh, if you were to use it on a crop sensor camera like uh, Fujifilm X-H1, that's where this turns into pretty much a 135 millimeter lens. So that's probably that's a, that's a reason why I haven't purchased the 135. I get away with cheating, and on a crop sensor, I can use that as a 135. And the thing is, it gets down to f 1.8, as where the 135 millimeter version Pentax it gets down to f 2.5. There's two versions. The other one gets to f 3.5. We can cheat on a crop sensor. So. I have the option, I can take it and use it on a Sony full frame mirrorless, or I take it down as the second camera with the X-H1 and cheat. It's, so that's a little, it's a little way of cheating if you've got two camera bodies. Eh? That's the beauty of having an APS-C sensor. If you don't have the lens and you've got two camera bodies, why not have an APS-C size sensored camera and the other full frame? And, um, and for the very pro pro user, if they use medium format and just APS-C, in the Fujifilm GFX 50S, you can put it in 35 millimeter crop mode and then you have a, a, a 135 mil lens on a medium format camera. So you can, that's, I think that's where the benefit of having a medium format camera uh, with just an APS-C size sensor uh, camera, then, you've, then if you're missing a lens, there you go. You don't have to have all the lenses across the board. You can start from, from your wide fisheye lens all the way up, fisheye 24, 28, 35, 50, and then the beauty of having the 55 millimeter lens, it becomes an 85, and then the 85 becomes a 135. So I hope your brain doesn't hurt. There you go, you've got a mix of how many lenses? So fisheye, 20 mil, 24, 28, 35, 50, Five, 50, 50, 55, and what is it? And then the last one, 85. I wanna double check that. Let's count that again. We'll count that again. So you have, you have the 17 mil, 20, 24, 28, 35, 50, 55, and then 85, eight lenses. Eight lenses will cover all your photography needs plus some. And that's if you have two camera bodies. So the APS-C and then medium format. That is the ultimate photographer's kit that will get you to be able to do everything and anything. Okay, it worked out. <laughs> Pentax Takuma. This is the 85 millimeter F 1.9. The reason I picked up the 1.9 it was cheaper at the time. Don't know what the, the price differences are now. It was cheaper to get the 1.9 than a 135 f2.5. That f, the 135 millimeter f2.5 lens, historically, it's a lot dearer and it's an expensive lens. Has more aperture blades, I think, from memory. This one is just a super tack. Serial number 889,749. Let's go the focus throw. Ooh, nearly, I think it's 270, maybe 300 focus throw. I'll confirm the actual specifics in the, in, on the website. We're gonna finish up this video and we'll, we'll talk about the lens adapters that I use. I, I guess there's people from probably watching from the start of the, the video going, what, what adapters did you use on your cameras? Okay, there's there was two versions. So for the for the Sony, I used a Photo Deox Pro M42 to NEX E-mount. That was a Type 1. There's two different versions. And uh, I from memory, there's two lenses that do not fit on the, the Photo Deox Pro. Uh, it might be the 85mm and one of the 50mm lenses. It's just the way they it, it seats into the into the adapter. The adapter has a lip and that lip stops the, the lens from seating into the adapter properly. 
the ver this version adapter, the photo deox, is important as the rear of the Pentax lenses have have the aperture pin, which I showed you before, and two small tabs sticking out. So if you decide on the other Pentax lenses, please double check and you get the right version adapter. So this one's just got the pin, so this will have no no issue sitting onto the version one adapter on the photo deox. As the other 85 mil, it won't seat into the it won't seat into the adapter. Solid metal lens adapter allows M42 screw mount Takama lens to fit on Fujifilm. Very affordable, there you go. $12.13 at the time I purchased the adapter. So where I talked about you can have five adapters, just you can have more on each lens. So you don't have to muck around with unscrewing them and putting them, taking them on and off to swap between lenses. Recommendation. Best to use lenses like these on mirrorless now as the probability of uh, mirror splat can happen and ruin your digital SLR. So you guys out there that still use a digital SLR, very prone to mirror slap on the back of the lens. So be very careful. Okay, other factors to consider mirrorless over digital SLR is that you have to shoot live view mode and cannot enjoy holding the camera to your eye for a much more enjoyable experience. Mirrorless has added features in a digital viewfinder for much greater control for manual lenses. Like I said before, digital punching, I, having that feature is amazing. Such features have made photographers switch from autofocus lenses like myself to manual because they are that easy and superb to use. I want to make a note, make sure you do your research and purchase from a recommended seller. Check, look, double check their feedback, uh, check the, the specifics of what they write about the lens. I've been caught out. I think anyone that buys secondhand lenses, that we are prone to be caught out. One where the uh, seller did not even um, specify that the lens cap was in the photographs. And then when you look at the photographs, it was just, that's the photograph. So sometimes you might even have to buy a lens cap separately. And these, these aren't cheap now. You can pay $30 plus for a lens cap and they're going up more because people lose these. It's so easy to take a lens cap off and leave it behind. Especially these ones, they're, they're, they're a metal lens cap and they're just not made anymore. You don't want, you want to keep, you want to try to keep them as an original. Uh, that's the other thing. When you see online, you're going to see these lenses advertised with a, it could be with a Nikon lens cap. I've seen that. I've seen um, different plastic uh, Pentax lens caps. These lenses, uh, early 70s and late 60s, they were made with this metal finished lens cap. So try buy your lens with it complete. The other thing is if you see a lens with a filter on it, uh, historically I've found that most of uh, the front optics are, uh, have been protected in that time. And if it has the uh, UV filter on it, especially the vintage one, you know you're going to get a good lens. That is a little bit about this Pentax collection uh, and the, the range of lenses. If you want more information, send a comment down below of what you'd like to, to know about. I'm still testing these lenses. It's going to be, it's a, it's a long process because each lens, they, they have, you have a specific task of what you want to shoot with. I might, might maybe get a model and photograph, I'd like to photograph a model and show each lens, um, specifically for portrait, portraits, and show you how these really shine. Um, in my case, my kids and family, they're sick of me taking their photographs. So that's, the, that's another project and maybe we can do a little show on shooting with these lenses. Uh, thanks guys for watching. If uh, you haven't used Pentax before and you're undecided whether or not you want to purchase one brand new lens for $1,000 as where you can purchase a couple of these lenses and save money, um, I highly, highly recommend using these lenses. I think they're an actual, actual fantastic option and not only that, these will increase in value. So if you find one in a thrift store, secondhand, secondhand market, or one of those big um, uh, camera places where the, where everyone meets and greets, like, and, and have a look, negotiate, maybe pick up a bargain like I have. Thanks guys for watching. Uh, if you 
are a Pentax fan, leave a comment below. Um, hopefully I'll see you in the future with the next video. Bye, thanks for watching.